Hello! Welcome back to my channel! And welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. <laughs> it's Tuesday, it's like 4 o'clock I think, and oh my god my brain is mush. I have done both so much and so little today, but I have been uh, pulled in multiple directions. I got absolutely no sleep last night and I woke up at like 7.30, which I know is not early at all, but I typically wake up at 8. Just a little sleepy, but I'm, I'm here to rally and I'm here to read some books and I hope you're ready to read some books with me too. I say that. This is probably going to be a more like chatty lifestyle type vlog because there's some like, you know, kind of exciting things happening this week and weekend, but I do have three books that I just grabbed off of my TBR cart that I am trying to get through. So let me briefly show you those and I can kind of like tell you what I'm doing this week. First up, you're invited by Amanda is, I don't know how to say this last name. It's beautiful. Is it Jayatissa? I don't know. I need to look it up because that bothers me. I hate not knowing the pronunciation of things, but I got, oh, I don't know, 80 pages into this in a weekly reading vlog a while ago, and it's a mystery thriller set in Sri Lanka, and I don't know, it just sounds good. And from what I have read of it, our heroine seems a little unhinged, and I'm into that, so. We also have Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn, who I think wrote a series that a lot of people really like called the Veronica Speedwell series. I have not read those books, but I'm pretty sure like Olivia and some of the other girlies really like those books. So I'm excited to read this one. I think it's a thriller like with older main characters, so that sounds pretty good. These are both book of the month selections, as is The Bodyguard. These are like the three books that I'm thinking of. This is one of my most anticipated romances because I really like Catherine Center, and it's about a female bodyguard who is trying to protect this guy, Jack Stapleton. He's like famous. I don't know. It seems like both of the characters in this book are like going through things, and so I don't know. It sounds kind of good sounds kind of good. I feel like these are all three like decently short books and will like balance out the other things that I have going on this week and by that I mean um do you see those thickies back there? Yeah I'm reading the longest books on my TBR for video that's coming out later this month and um I'll be listening to those on audio this week as well <laughs> so I need something kind of like chill to kind of get me through this week but I guess the exciting things that are happening. One thing I'm sure is already in the thumbnail of this video uh and as a spoiler something's happening on Sunday. I might be adding another fur shaped being into my life. It's a long story, in which I will explain later on, on Sunday. And then Saturday, I'm actually going to a football game with my entire family, and I'm so excited about it. I say entire family. Hayden doesn't want to go because Hayden doesn't enjoy football, which is totally fine, but I'm going with my mom, my dad, my sister. I'm really excited. It's a night game, and it hasn't been, like, that hot lately, so I think I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine. I'm excited because I love football, so I'll take you along with me for that as well. This week, I don't really have that much going on besides reading, but, like, I don't know. If me and Hayden have any fun car adventures, you're coming with me if I'm going to be eating any good food also coming with me. Hayden's like working on some coursework right now, so he's a little bit busy, so I don't know how much cooking he's gonna get done, but like a bitch needs to eat. So one way or the other, like food will be getting eaten. Crumble is not happening this week, just heads up. That's the only reason you clicked. So sorry, but they're Minions flavors. I feel like that says it all. Okay, anyway, um, I think I am going to start in on The Bodyguard first. I'm going to probably toggle between this and The Secret History for that reading the longest books on my TBR video. So I'm gonna get started on that. Enjoy some delightful B-roll footage and I will be back to you whenever I, you know, get started on this. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow home. Golden, golden, golden things. Hello! Happy Wednesday! I told you I'd update you when I started reading this, and I have started reading it. So I'm like 100 pages in. It's cute. I'm enjoying it. So this book's about our main character, Hannah, and Hannah's mom recently died, and she is not dealing super well with that. At the very beginning of the book, she is like pulled off of an assignment at work and she's just not super happy about her lot. Um, but things turn around about a month later, you know, after she's also unceremoniously done by her boyfriend, things turn around because she is assigned to be the bodyguard to this famous actor. I think I mentioned that earlier, but she is a bodyguard, executive protection agent. She's assigned to this guy and I really like this. To me, this is perfectly straddling the line between comedy and seriousness. Don't get me wrong, I love a rom-com, but I don't like when things are like too goofy 
goofy or awkward. I think I'm feeling that way because I was just trying to attempt to read the American Ruby experiment and that one just like didn't work for me because it was just a little too goofy. This one is not that goofy and I appreciate it. So basically Jack, our hero, has come to Houston to, I don't want to say take care of his mom with cancer, but to, you know, spend more time with her because he, we don't really know the diagnosis or like what's, what's happening at the beginning of the story, but he is estranged a little bit from his family because he got in a car accident with his brother and his brother ended up passing away. He ended up obviously not passing away and his older brother and him had some sort of falling out. And I don't know if it was because of the accident or what, but he is upset. Um, his name's Hank, I think. So that's going to come into play. And at the part that I was just at, I think we're like getting getting into the meat of the story. We have Hannah having to pretend to be Jack's girlfriend because it would be weird for him to like show up with just like a random woman. <laughs> be like, oh hey, here's my bodyguard to his parents who live a very like normal lifestyle. So she's having to pretend to be his girlfriend. After his mom just got out of surgery to remove, I think, a tumor in her breast, she asks Jack if he will bring his girlfriend to their ranch house in Texas and hang out there until Thanksgiving. So I think for like a few weeks. And Hannah didn't really think that she was going to have to do that, but that is that is now her job. It's fun. I don't know. I don't really know how else to describe what I'm enjoying about the story, but I think Hannah's character is really interesting to me. I like that she is not what I expected. For some reason, given the premise and given the cover of this book, I expected her to be kind of like silly almost or someone not to be taken seriously, but she is definitely aggressively serious which I kind of think adds to the humor of the story. Like she's just here to try to do her job. She really enjoys her job. She's like a very high achieving individual. I think she's going to learn how to lighten up a little bit by being around Jack. Not that he is like, you know, annoyingly like not serious, but he does have like a humorous element to him and there's already been like a couple of funny scenes in this book and I don't know, I'm liking it. I expected to like it because I like Catherine Center and I do think she handles like real world issues, I guess you could say pretty well. I've read a couple of different books of hers that like do deal with grief and like some harder topics and I think she typically handles them pretty, pretty well. So I am enjoying this. I don't think this is going to be like super serious because it is a rom-com, but so far so good. I don't know, it's a good time. I also just had dinner, which you just saw. We had these really, really incredible burritos. I don't know, I'm just in a good mood today. I've been furiously cleaning my house all day, which is why I haven't like updated you before now. I think it's like 8.30 at this point. I am trying to get some audiobooks done for this video I'm doing. I'm trying to think of like when that one's getting posted. Okay, I won't spoil it because it is getting posted after this <laughs> after this weekly reading vlog, but essentially I'm having to listen to some really long audiobooks, shall we say, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to just sit down and not do anything. I mean, I often sit down and do nothing. Don't get me wrong. That's me. Given the length of these audiobooks, I wanted to like be productive while I did that, so I put in my like, put on my big over ear headphones today and I vacuumed and detailed my car. I vacuumed the stairs. I just did like a ton of cleaning because I'm getting another cat. I know. <laughs> did not expect to be getting another cat ever really. I mean not ever. I, I love cats obviously. I'm always gonna have cats but uh, another cat came on my radar. I got this just like big urge and now I'm getting another cat. So I'll tell you the, the story, I guess. This cat is two years old. I've never gotten an adult cat before. This cat I found out about a couple of months ago. He is a total sweetie. There has been a lot of like interest in him. People have like been really interested in adopting him, but most of the families that have applied to adopt or like have been interested in him don't have any other cats. Like they just are like single cat households or I guess he would be their only cat. And he has been around other cats for his entire life. And I say entire life like he's only two but he's been around other cats and like the adoption preference there is to have him go to a home that has other cats because he does better with friends like he, he's really like sweet and likes other cats and when I found that out I was just like okay really cute I'm really interested in him but I just like put it off for a while like I kept looking at his picture and I was like okay but he's adorable but I don't need another cat I don't need another cat and I would continue to go on the website week after week and say oh if he's there next week think about it and that went on for like a couple of months and I was like I just I really don't need another cat but <laughs> has circumstances happened. Things are all coming together and I'm, I'm getting another cat. I don't really have any like really big reason for it. I just like wanted another cat. I mean, I could be wrong, obviously, but I think it would actually maybe like make the dynamics of the house even more fun and, and better in some ways. All of my cats get along swimmingly well. Anytime like we've had other cats in the house and I say that, my sister's cat, Honey, uh, stayed with all three of my cats for a while and they all like they got along perfectly well with some introduction. I'm not worried about the new cat getting introduced to my cats, but I think it would be nice because <laughs> I've noticed 
noticed that Teddy tends to gang up on Pepe just, just a little bit. And I think sometimes Pepe would appreciate if Teddy had another playmate. And given that this new cat, who I'm naming Pickles, uh, given that Pickles is closer to Teddy's age, I think like the energy levels might be more matched there. And I also think that Pickles is like considerably bigger than Pepe. I mean, that's not really like that hard because he is like very small. <laughs> He's like, I would say regular cat size, maybe a little smaller than a regular cat. So that's what's happening on Sunday. I am picking him up and I'm bringing him here. He won't get to like meet the other cats in this vlog or like for a week. I am keeping him isolated. Then I'm taking him to the vet to make sure that everything is good. I don't want him to like pass on anything to my cats. I'm not really worried about his health, but I just, you know, obviously want to make sure and be as cautious as possible. And then once that is done, I will slowly start introducing them to each other. But um, I'm very much looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. And I, I love cats, y'all. This, however, will be my final cat at a time. Like I, I cannot do more than four cats. That being said, I think the transition from two to three, I think will have been a harder transition than from three to four. Teddy was just a really challenging kitten. <laughs> I don't know, Pepe was a really easy cat, so going from one to two was not very challenging. Going from two to three was, but I think three to four will be fine. Anyway, all that to say, I'm really excited, and I just wanted to like introduce that to you instead of just bringing it on you later. Not that it really matters, but I'm very excited. It's been very much on my mind, and so that's why I've been like cleaning my house and stuff. I know whenever I bring new cats into my life, especially when I'm having to keep like a cat isolated from other cats, I do like to spend one-on-one -on -one time with the new cat, and I know I won't be like roaming around my houses freely. I want to make sure that like my house is mostly taken care of and that everything is like really prepped so I don't feel overwhelmed when I bring this new cat into my life. I'm so excited. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I will stop rambling. I do actually need to go and do some other reading. I am working on a Patreon exclusive reading vlog at the same time that I'm doing this. At the same time that I am also doing a secret TBR, I read five video for like a week or two from now, but I really need to like stay focused to, to read for that one because you know I'm reading some long books for it <laughs> so I'll probably update you in the morning tomorrow I'm, I'm hoping to get farther into this book and finish it tomorrow in its entirety but I won't probably be reading much of it tonight because I do need to read some other stuff I'm reading Fling by Adriana Locke which is like actually really fun and I am reading The Secret History anyway I'll talk to you tomorrow <laughs> Happy Friday! I just got back from a shopping expedition with my little sister and it was such a good time. Honestly, much needed. <laughs> I say that as if I'm not going to be spending the entire day of tomorrow with her and my parents, I guess. But we went to the domain in Austin to look for something to like wear <laughs> for the game tomorrow. It's gonna be at seven, which is nice, but it's also probably still going to be pretty hot. And while I do have like a couple of things in my wardrobe I could wear, um, they all have like sleeves. And if I can just keep the pitol region open and get air I think that would be better for everyone. So I did find the perfect romper. You're not gonna be able to tell that it's cute from uh, me just holding it up. It's just a burnt orange burnt orange number. I'll show you tomorrow. It'll be cute. I got it on clearance too, which was super exciting. I think it was like originally 60 bucks. I got it for 30 bucks, which was perfect because as so much as I love the horns. College football team, if you're unfamiliar. <laughs> I don't really need a ton of stuff in my wardrobe that is like UT related. I, I try to have like one or two things I can wear to a game because I usually go to like one or two games a year, I guess. Um, but I, I don't obviously need a ton of things. And this was perfect. It's comfortable. It's cool. It's spaghetti straps. I think it's getting at me through game day. I'm like cute with some cowboy boots. So anyway, got that. And then I treated myself to a something something. I got myself a Le Labo fragrance, which mm, I have one other one. I got it for my birthday. I think either last year or the year before. I got the Neroli scent, which I absolutely adore. It lingers and lasts all day. That one kind of smells like summer to me. It kind of reminds me of like sunscreen and the beach, but like in a nice way. Not coconutty at all, but like, I don't know, kind of like sharp and acidic and in a nice like fresh way. Anyway, um, this one's actually not that dissimilar. It's the Fleur... Is it Durange? I don't actually know how to say that, but it's some sort of like orange blossom scent. I don't know how to describe the scent of this. It does also kind of smell like summer. I like very fresh scents, but I'm not a picky person. I like a lot of different fragrances. I also like kind of warm musky scents as well, but this one kind of smells like fresh laundry to me. Like fresh laundry plus orange is how I would describe this. Um, not an artificial laundry scent, but just like clean and nice. I think there's also lemon in here. Just 10 out of 10. I also like it because you can get it like customized with your name. How cute is that? So anyway, got myself a little fragrance. And while this is not necessarily mm, fall appropriate. I'd, I'd probably still wear it in fall. I don't really care. My go-to scent right now is Mojave Ghost by Byredo, which is also a really good one. The boys are just so 
so intrigued. <laughs> that was my little shopping excursion. I also got some sprinkles cupcakes because, you know, got a sweet tooth. But it is, I think, yeah, it's like 6.15 and I am ready to finish off the bodyguard tonight. Um, I also think I might watch some Gilmore Girls amongst other things. I have so, I have so much to get done <laughs> tonight, y'all. It's kind of self-imposed, I guess. Like tomorrow I want to just really relax, hang out with my sister, my family, and like not do anything book related. And then Sunday, I know that I'm going to be taking care of my new baby. And so I don't really want to <laughs> have the pressure on myself to like film or edit or upload anything on Sunday. So what I need to do is finish The Bodyguard. I also need to finish Fling and Mercy for my Patreon exclusive reading vlog. And then I also need to finish editing the second half of the DBBC that's going up for Sunday. I would love to get that one done. So again, I don't have anything to do on Sunday. I think I'm probably still gonna read books on Sunday. Like even though I'm gonna have a new baby to take care of, like he's gonna want attention and affection, I'm assuming. Maybe he won't, maybe he wants to be left alone. We'll see, play it by ear. Uh, I do intend to like read as well. Hopefully I'll be done with this and like dipping my toes into, is it Killers of a Certain Age or something like that? I don't know, the Deanna Rayborn one. But this is the goal of tonight. I'll probably just update you one more time with this book, to be honest. I like did get to the 50% mark. Not much of note has happened. They are at the ranch. There has been a couple of like cute moments, but there's nothing like new and exciting and fresh to tell you. I'm feeling like this is going to be like a four or five star read though. This is like really fun and exciting and I'm really glad. So many of my most anticipated romances of the year have like really let me down in this one. It's not, which is like kind of strange, I guess, especially since this is like more chick lit than like a true rom-com, I don't know. I will give you some B-roll cats, of course. Hello friends, I am in Hayden's car. It is Monday and I'm here to finish off the vlog, which is so weird because I was just editing this video and I realized there's only like 17 minutes in this weekly reading vlog, which never happens. Though I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I didn't want to cram this vlog full of stuff that was, you know, uninteresting. Not that this was the most interesting vlog regardless, but uh, I thought I would tell you my final thoughts on The Bodyguard because I did actually finish this one. I didn't get around to the other two books because I have been busy taking care of pickles, but I hope you enjoyed like the minimal, I guess you could say B-roll footage of him. He's very like nervous and shy right now so I'm not trying to like get up in his face and like get my big camera out or anything to film him but I'm hoping that he gets more comfortable in the next couple of days and I can show you him you know then but uh the bodyguard was really cute I will say this one disappointed me just a little bit I ended up giving this book four stars instead of five which like is not really that surprising because I'm like a little bit hard to please I think this one is interesting because it is so focused on the romance plotline especially compared to some of Catherine Center's other books but I feel like 
it still wasn't the most romance forward even though it was technically a romance there was just a lot of like emphasis on other things the sex scene was mostly closed door which like i think will irritate some people it didn't bug me a ton because i just loved the dialogue in this book like that's really what made the story fun for me i read the author's note at the end and it was really clear that she wrote this during the pandemic she just wanted like a really fun book that was very escapist and that's definitely what this one felt like to me it wasn't super serious i don't think this is like a swoony like puzzle pc romance or anything but i did just like the idea of like falling in love with a movie star who you're a bodyguard for it was just really cute and i did like the emotional components that did come into the story at the end as well I wasn't really expecting much i guess in terms of emotional depth and i think i might have like said that earlier but the end of the book does have some more like emotionally resonant moments we do have like the bonding of the hero and the heroine over some like i don't want to say shared trauma but like you know they both have shit in their life that like impacted them and they both got to work through the things that were plaguing them i guess which is really sweet the very end of the book is like corny and like totally i don't want to say outside of the realm of possibility but it, it surprised me that they went the route that they did in certain regards that being said like i still had a fun time with it the only other thing that i would mention is that there's sort of this like not like other girls aspect to the story and that our heroine is a bodyguard and she is described as being so ordinary and so average and so plain by multiple different people in the story not just the hero and obviously he like comes to love her but he never like emphasizes her physicality and stuff i don't know that just kind of bothered me yeah sure someone can like not be a model or a movie star but they can still be beautiful to you and like i wish that had been explored a little bit more or like he had said verbatim like oh i find you really attractive i know that's like nitpicky but like the guys that are like really infatuated with the heroines what can i say okay um i'm gonna leave it there thanks so much for watching this reading vlog like i said i am going to actually start up another weekly reading vlog right after i click end on on this clip Aiden is going into crumble and grabbing us some cookies and we're gonna do a crumble taste test it's been a second uh, and technically i'm not even supposed to be doing a weekly reading vlog this upcoming week but i just feel like i want to share things with you i want to share pickles progress since i don't actually have that many secret tbr videos like coming up like i don't have a ton of like really wild stuff coming i figured like i can take the time to do another weekly reading vlog so thanks so much for watching i will see you in the next one i love you all so much and until next time